Most people simply don't break apart society in scholarly ways. Most people don't look at systems, just as most people don't know what a half measure or a whole measure is, what a half step or a whole step is, what a time signature is when in regards to music. They don't pay attention to scholarly ways of looking at society. They don't find it important. I mean, they may, they may think that there are some important things within, you know, society, right? But they may not find it important to have to know all of the lingo, you know? They don't really care about a lot of those things because they don't, they don't know enough to care. And they shouldn't be given guilt trips for not caring. If an educated vocabulary on social issues is really important to you, fine. If it's important to you, fine. But the moment you start guilt tripping people about not wanting to know more about those things or not being more educated about those things or having opinions that show that they're not very educated about those things and you keep trying to force it on them, yeah, they're, they're likely to listen less and less the more and more you push it. And eventually they may form opinions that go just completely the opposite of you on that. And, you know, it's kind of jeopardizing your friendship by pushing this constantly. Don't put this kind of thing in the way of your friendships with people. Be considerate of their interests and their boredoms. I mean, if you're going to call them your friends anyway. So you're frustrated that they just don't get it. Well, accept that they probably never will get it, so you can move on and continue with your friendship. Everyone has flaws, but it's up to you. If their unwillingness to acknowledge the higher education methods of breaking apart society is just so abhorrent to you that you just can't imagine being friends with them anymore, fine, go ahead and be a jackass and end your friendship. Go ahead. But seriously, you know, if, if we want people in general to listen to what we have to say and to things that would make them more educated, yeah, let's mess up the quotation marks and just kind of move our hands around and, and that sort of thing. But seriously, if we want people to listen in general, we're going to have to stop using phrases that we know trigger people. Regardless of what those phrases really mean, we're going to have to stop saying things and pushing concepts that sound absolutely ab abhorrent to people unless they know the full intellectual context, the, the, the properly educated context. If we know that, that saying something makes people angry, and we understand why it makes them angry, then maybe we shouldn't say it. Maybe we should put the work into finding ways of being able to say it that might actually be palatable to the people, that people might actually be receptive to. We can't just throw around buzzwords and buzz phrases and mottos and taglines and expect people to get the deeper meanings of any of it. Especially when those things mean something horrible, absolutely horrible, to people who don't know the deeper ramifications for them. They don't know the properly educated uh, ways of looking at those phrases. When they get angry after you throw buzzwords at them, figuratively pointing at them and saying, ha ha, you're too stupid to get it, isn't going to help you here. It just makes you look like a bully. And let's make no mistake about it, if, even if you say it nicely, it's, it's like the equivalent of, of listening to some religious person say, I don't hate you, I just think you're going to burn in hell for eternity. So, for example... When someone says, a system of white supremacy, all most people hear is white supremacist. They don't care about systems, and until they know you're talking about systems, and until they actually know what sy these systems are, they're going to think that everything you're saying is just a bunch of rubbish extremism. When someone says toxic masculinity, all most people are going to hear is masculinity is toxic. People simply aren't going to be thinking about concepts from the mythopoetic men's movement from the 1980s and the 1990s. When someone says patriarchy, all people can think about are how women are treated in the Middle East. And they'll often wonder why feminists don't more often complain about the way that women are treated in Islamic cultures. 
They don't care about systems that are still in place here. They don't really care about systems in general. So as long as it looks like people have the same legal rights, these people will think that there are no problems. It's all gone. There's nothing significant left over from earlier times that we need to be concerned about. And we shouldn't be concerned about an uptick in conservative religious traditionalism that's even making its way into the atheist movement. Nope, nothing to see here. It's the feminists who are the real problem. Feminists, Muslims, and those damn Mexicans, right? But I'm socially on the left. Sure you are, sure you are. But I digress. So yeah, if we want people to listen to socially liberal viewpoints, especially ones that require a lot of, I don't know what you call it, I, I said it earlier, intellectual context. I don't know whether, whether that's the right way to put it, but it's the best phrasing I can think of right now. But, you know, especially stuff that involves a lot of intellectual context, we're going to have to find a way to word things that doesn't sound immediately abhorrent to the general Joe. Learning about social theories, learning about systems. There's nothing really rewarding about learning about those things. It's not like what someone gets out of learning a new way to analyze music. With music, there's the immediate ability to find something new in a song that you've always liked. That kind of reward doesn't happen when learning sociology. And you could try to claim that the people who don't want to learn about those things are anti-intellectuals. Well, would you say that someone who doesn't know music theory but creates good music, would you call them anti-intellectual? Is it required that someone categorize the things that they see and experience a very particular way? Is that required? Do we all have to look at things that way or be deemed anti-intellectual? Granted, when there are people who go to the extremes of thinking the earth is flat or not believing in the concept of evolution, they don't think it happens, they're convinced of this, or people that believe strongly that in Western countries, the people who are truly oppressed are the white men, and the people who are truly privileged are women, especially black women. Yeah, when people start pushing fucked up, stupid, just wrong, messed up, uneducated viewpoints, I mean, just total bullshit, then yeah, sometimes we have to step in and say something. But where does one begin when people have reached such extreme levels of what the fuck? I guess I don't know what more to say. Stay strong, fuck off, and have a nice day.